Hello everyone, Mr Casey here for another draw with Mr Casey. Today we're going to be looking at perspective. Perspective is where things look like they get smaller as they get further away. As you can see in these pictures here, the columns on the right are bigger at the front and smaller at the back. And the pictures uh, here, there's buildings in the front that look much bigger and the buildings in the back look much smaller. It's been used a lot throughout history as you can see from this painting here. And the way it's done is we use a central point called a vanishing point. And this one has a red horizon line as well. And uh, it makes it look like there's a bit of depth in your picture. Um, today we're going to be looking at perspective as we had a look at in those slides before. So what you're going to need today, a piece of paper. You're going to need a pencil, a ruler, a pen, uh, and a rubber, which I've misplaced. So here, and a rubber as well. Um, we're going to use the method of do it light till you get it right, okay? So I'm going to be doing it a little bit hard with my pencil just so you can see it. But when you come to do yours, if you do it light, because you're going to need to rub out some lines after, okay? So first thing we need to think about is if we're going to be using pen, I had a parent tell me about this last time, someone drew, drew the um, dragon with a sharpie, but only used one piece of paper and didn't put a protective piece of paper underneath. So now their table has a nice picture of a dragon on it too. So if you are using sharpies uh, or permanent markers, make sure that you put another piece of paper underneath just to protect your mum and dad's table because we don't want them to get mashed up. Okay, so we're looking at perspective. So with perspective, with those pictures that you saw before, you probably saw a nice big long red line. And that line is what we call her horizon line. Her horizon line is in the distance, like when you look at the horizon. So that's the point in the distance. And there is also a little dot, usually around the centre, uh, which is called a vanishing point. So we're going to have that on ours. We're going to have a vanishing point uh, on our picture as well. But the first thing we're going to do is going to use our ruler, pop it sort of across the middle of our page. And we're going to just draw. I'm going to remember again, I'm going to do it nice and thick. You just need to do it light so you can rub it out later. But I have to do it a bit thicker so you can actually see. OK, so we're going to do a line going across the page, just slightly north of centre. And then we're going to have leave a little bit of a gap, maybe just a fingernail's length. And we're going to do another line down here. Again, I'm doing it thick. I don't want you to do it thick, I want you to do it nice and light because then you can rub them out after. Okay, then we're going to choose a vanishing point, okay? A vanishing point is just a dot. And if you look at some uh, some of the art that we had a look at in the slides, you see it looks like it all travels away to a distance. If you look at, if you go into the playground and you stand at the top of the football pitch, or not the football pitch, the basketball pitch, and it's got those squares, if you look straight down the middle, you'll see that those squares look a bit like they go away like that. And we know they don't, we know they're square and they're all equal, but they do look like they go further away like that. So that's what we're gonna have to try and replicate in our picture. So I'm gonna choose a vanishing point. And my vanishing point, I'm just gonna make a dot like that. Can you see that dot? Yeah, great. So from that dot, I'm gonna have to draw some lines. Okay, this is again, we need our ruler again. So I'm not gonna go straight up. I'm gonna go slightly off and Doing it light till you get it right. And do one, two, three, and maybe a fourth one going over there. Um, I don't need any going across this middle bit. We're going to use this for something else after this middle strip, but I do need to make sure they come out onto the sides here. So do some more. They don't have to be equal parts either, not like a clock or a sunrise or anything like that. I don't have to be equal they can be some can be slightly skinnier like that some can be much fatter like that okay but they've all got to come down to this vanishing point okay and I'm going to even put a tiny skinny dot of one over there okay and then you can do the same on the bottom side I'm going to add that line going here You need to pause the video to make sure you're doing yours right. That is absolutely fine. And just push play again after. Or 
so if you paused it, you wouldn't have heard me say that. Right. So they are going to be my. Drop my pen. They're going to be my vanishing point lines, basically. Okay. So all of my things are going down into that far distance down there. Okay, I'm not going to be drawing in this, like I said before, so I will be rubbing out those lines after, but um, I just need them there just to help me as a guide for now, okay? So what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be drawing a bird's eye view of some buildings looking down onto a street. Okay, so I've done a mock-up. We're not gonna do it quite like this, it's slightly different, but there's a street down there and we're looking like we're in the middle of the street looking down from above the buildings, okay? And if you look very carefully, you'll see that I've got my vanishing point somewhere in here, isn't it? Because all of these lines are going into that point. But the tops of the buildings are still square shaped. Well, I mean, they get cut off by the other buildings, but they're square shaped. So we need to think about that when we're doing our pictures too. So here's how we do it. Still using our pencil. I'm gonna choose a block. So I'm gonna choose this block here to do my first building. And I want this building to be nice and tall. So I'm gonna make it go all the way from the ground level here up to here. And the way I do it is I just draw a straight line going across. And you can see that looks like the front of a building now. Now all I have to do is draw a line going up like that. Hold on one second. Washing machine going when I'm trying to do this picture. Okay, uh, so there's my first um, building, that's its roof, and this is its side. So I'm going to draw in this corner, do it a bit thicker now, and I'm going to go down to that line, which is our road line. Okay, and then I'm going to add this one in too. Okay, now if I wanted, I could not have a building here make that into another street but I'm not going to do that what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a building as well and so I'm going to make this go up a bit as well and then I'm going to make this one go up too so this building so tall it comes off the top of our page we can't see that one next thing we're going to do is I'm going to make this into an alleyway and this is going to be another building so sounds tricky than it is what we do is we go to the road we find the corner of this building. So we've got this building coming down here. We find the corner and we do a straight line going straight up. So it doesn't go vertically, uh, yeah, vertically with the um, uh, horizon line lines, not horizon line, vanishing point lines. It goes straight up instead. So we're gonna add that in, just like that. And then I'm gonna add the front of this corner of this building, just like this, okay. And now I'm going to make this building square off. And I've drawn a line here. Actually, you know, I don't want to use that line. I'm going to make this building a bit bigger. I'm going to make it a bit fatter. Make it come out to the next line. And then I can add that line going all the way to the end of the page. So now that's one building, that's two buildings, that's three buildings. Okay, I might make this building a bit smaller because I've got lots of tall ones sticking off the top of the page now. So I'm going to make this building a bit smaller. So I'm going to come down to here. Here, I'm going to make it about the width of my ruler actually. So there's my line from my pavement. And then I'm going to add a line here. Like that. Okay, now I need to add the roof the same as I did here. It's going to go straight up. Okay, so this is my the top of the building. I'm going to go straight up. Okay, but I'm not going to go to the end. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make it into a square goes behind this roof. You can see it looks like a, a roof slightly lower than that roof now. Can you see that? I'm going to add this edge of this building here. Okay and then I might actually I'm going to have a street here. I've got a little alleyway here. I'm going to have a street here so I'm going to leave a slightly bigger gap maybe to about here. And I'm going to draw another straight line up. Now <clears throat> this street doesn't just finish behind this building, this street goes all the way out. So it's going to have to be seen behind the top of that building too there. Do you see how that works? I've got the street, this is our main street, and I've got another street coming here. And I can see just the edge of it over here. 
and then I've got another building here which I'm going to add to. Now because I've added a corner onto this street now, I have to have a corner of that building, don't I? So the way I do that is I line my ruler up with my vanishing point again, then I line it up with that corner, and I can draw another straight line going out, and then it looks like another corner of that building. Okay, and I think that might do me for now. Actually, I'm going to make this building not as tall. A little bit more complicated. Again, if you're if you're struggling to fight and you find it really hard, you can just finish that line going out the top. If you're finding oh, you're thinking oh, this is pretty cool. I can do this pretty easily. You can make this building a bit shorter, so you can add a line going to your vanishing point. Add another corner of the roof, and then you've got the front of the building, and you need to just square off the top. Okay. Now we've got a little gap here. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna make that tall. I'm gonna make that tall building. Okay, I've got to square off this roof. And that is all of this side pretty much done. If I wanna just do some light lines with my pencil, just so I remember where the roads are, so I know that that's a road, and that's a road, and that's a road. I know that all of this is going to be a road in a minute. All right, I've got to rub these out, don't forget, so don't go too hard when you're doing that. I'm just going to finish up these buildings over here then. So, going from that corner, I finished that building up there before. I'm going to make another small building over here. Maybe it's a little row of shops. It's going to be about the same height as that, so I can just line it up. Give me another row of shops maybe down there. I can square that off down here. And I don't need to worry about the roof because it's sort of hidden behind this building. I don't really need to worry about drawing that because it's kind of already done for me. Okay, so that's one side of the street. Now I'm going to do the same on the other. So I'm going to turn it around and do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so I've added in all of the lines for this one. I've left a little street here and here um, and made some of the buildings go different sizes. Now I can use my rubber and wrap out all of the vanishing point lines in the because I don't need those anymore. I can rub all of those out, okay? So remember, you you should have done it quite light, so it'll be easy for you to rub out. You can rub out those lines going across the street as well, making sure you're not rubbing out your building lines. And I didn't use that line, so I can rub that out. I didn't use that line, so I can rub that out too. Okay. And basically got my perspective drawn, drawing done. Now, you might be thinking, why have I bothered to do it looking down from the sky? That's because we're going to add something in the middle here. Remember I said we're going to leave a big space for a reason. Here is the reason, right. What you need to do is turn your page this way up now to do this next part, okay? And we're going to add something here. Right, so pencil again. We're going to draw almost a balloon shape, slightly rounded balloon shape up at this sort of area, okay? So I'll show you what I mean. Comes to almost a point, not quite a point, it's quite curved. I'm gonna go up and curve it over. Like that. Like a sort of C shape. I'm gonna curve around the top of the C shape like that. Okay, and then we're gonna keep it in the nice curve and come down and join it up down here. Okay, so we're gonna keep it in a nice sort of curved shape. Join it up down there. And you can see how it's almost a balloon shape, not quite a balloon shape. It comes down to almost a point down here and it's sort of more rounded on the top. Okay, once you've done that, you need to draw a small, slightly curved, square shape up here, just slightly curved. And remember, do it like till you get it right, so it makes it easier for yourself. And on the end of this slightly curved, squarish shape, we're gonna add one, two, three slightly curved, 
square shapes here, and then one just a bit further down here. Okay. Right, next thing we're gonna do is on this side, opposite of our slightly curved squarish shapes, we're going to add another curve line. So we're gonna go straight across, and this line's gonna come out just about, what, about the same distance really, not very large at all. And it's gonna curve down, and it's gonna curve in. So it's another C shape. We do like drawing C shapes, don't we? Okay, and then we're gonna, same as we did here, sort of a curved point. We're gonna add another curved point here. We're gonna go back up into this shape up here. Okay. Next job we're gonna do is gonna add another rectangle. It's all circles, squares, triangles, and rectangles. So we're gonna carry on where this line curved around this way and went straight down for a bit. We're gonna carry on straight down that way. Okay, we're gonna go down about the same sort of distance that you did this space here. We're gonna do the same sort of distance here. So in mine, it's just a little bit bigger than from the end of my nail to my knuckle. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. End of my nail to a knuckle comes down to about here. And then I'm going to curve it round this way. And in line with that, I'm just going to stop there. So I've got a nice sort of L, curvy L shape on this side. Then on this side, from this point here, where the, our balloon shape joined our triangle shape, we're going to draw a straight line down, but not quite join it up. Just leave a tiny, tiny gap. Okay, so it's going to come down to the same area, but stop just before. So we're going to go straight down like this and stop just like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a backward C shape just around like that, just in there. Easy peasy. Okay, um, from this side of our balloon shape, we're just gonna draw sort of another curve going this way into this shape. Okay, so we'll do it from sort of the chin, actually this bottom bit, we're gonna curve it this way. I wonder if anyone can see what we're drawing. At the minute, but it will become clear in a minute. Okay, so we've done that. I'm just going to add a small line on there. Right. Next thing we're going to do, just above our triangle, rectangle, whatever it is shape, we're going to come just a step above, tiny, tiny little step, and we're going to draw another curve shape, and it's going to come down and line up with the bottom of this um, point. So sort of around here draw a curve going round and lines up with that. So let's do that now. Curve that way. Good. Okay. I'm going to draw a straight line into there, slightly downwards. Not going straight across, going slightly down and into there. All right. And we've got to add a couple more lines and we're almost done. So we're going to add um, another curve we're going to come this way and we're going to make it sort of like a, a backwards j we're going to come this way we're going to come down like a backwards j just turn in that way like that okay i'll just leave it there for now on this side in line with where we've drawn this little uh triple point here when three lines join up we're going to come across to this side so we're going to keep it in line we're going to draw a line slightly going up and then curving this way and stopping just about there will do. Just sort of in line with our buildings, we're going to curve it down. Or if you have drawn it a little bit over, because obviously we're all doing this individually, so I can't see yours. Yours might be a little bit over, don't worry if it doesn't touch the building. Don't worry if it's already going over the building, that's why we did it in pencil so it can rub bits out and that's absolutely fine as well. And you should probably be able to see what we're drawing by now. Um, it's uh, Spider-Man, because Spider-Man is going to be up in the sky and he's looking down on these buildings, isn't he, when he's swinging on his webs. So that's what we're drawing in our picture. I thought it'd be a bit of fun. So, we've got to finish our Spider-Man's legs, because at the minute they just look like stick-man legs, and that's no good. So what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, a point coming down this way from, from where his hand is. 
and draw a curvy point like this. It goes slightly lower than this outside of his leg. And then we're gonna have his, this is his foot. It's gonna curve back up into the leg like that. So it's got like a V shape. So all of this sort of looks a bit like a pointy W. We've got a V shape like that. And then in here, just gonna draw a small line coming out like this. Okay, that's all we need to do for that leg. Then this leg we need to finish, so it comes out this way, just above where the fingers are. We're gonna have a little line coming out. We're gonna follow that shape of that leg and we're gonna curve it down. And then we're gonna add on his um, foot on the bottom. And just like we did here, sort of a curvy point, we're gonna do a curvy point. So we'll do it going uh, upwards, slightly up like that. Small curvy point, and we're gonna add the curve coming around underneath. Yeah, it does look a little bit weird at the minute, but don't worry, it'll, it'll, it'll all become clear in a minute. We add the back of the foot, we join them up, and it does look a bit weird, but then we just got to add a small line here to make the top of the foot. And we can finish this curve coming down here. And it makes it look like the bottom of the foot. Okay, and don't worry about that line there, because we're going to use that line in a minute anyway. So, lots of it done, we just got to sort of add his webbing on, really. So. Uh, on his hip here, he's got a belt bit, so we just draw a little line going across like that for his belt. On his legs, he wears boots, so the way we add the boots is we add a curved line like that on this side. It looks like he's got a boot on. And then on this one, this is because this leg's bent back and pointing down towards our vanishing point, we have to just add a curve going the other way because it looks like it's going down that way. Okay, we've got to add his eyes on. Obviously, they're one of the most important parts, I suppose, of Spider-Man. So we go to his chin where it points down here, and we're just gonna go a small step, we're not gonna go all the way to the top. His eyes are sort of nearer the bottom of his head. Actually, most of his face is in the bottom half of his head, as with everybody, but particularly with this Spider-Man character that we're doing. So we take a small step up, okay, and then we have to draw a pentagram. A pentagram is five sides, pence five, isn't it? So we have our point at the top and it's a very, very small pentagram. So we've got a point at the top and then we come in slightly for the sides and then we just join up the bottom. A small pentagram in the middle. And then we're gonna add his eyes. So this eye, because his head's slightly turned this way, we're gonna, it's not gonna be as round. It's gonna come right near the edge of this, um, side of his face. So the way we do that is we start on this point of our pentagram and we do a curve and it goes, uh, it's got it's like an S but it's got a very small bottom part of its S so it's very small curve that way and then it curves up to a point that kind of just goes above where his hand is. So we do a curve like that. It goes up to a point. And then this side of his eye goes right to the side of his face, so we can just draw a small curve to the side of his face there. And then the bottom of his eye goes straight to that first point, and we just curve it around that way. Now we have to do his other eye. So we start on this same point, and we're gonna have the eyes going up to the same height, up to here. So I'm gonna draw just a small point. Now, because his face is turned this way a little bit, we don't have to go right to the edge of the uh, face to do this eye, okay? So we've still got that small kind of uh, curve, but this time, because his, his nose is pointed that way, that gives us that S shape here. We don't need to worry about that now because his nose is all the way over here. We only have to worry about this side. So we just have to curve, go slightly down, just tiny, tiny little dot down. And then we do a, a bump, basically, over to this side. Okay, I'm just gonna use the curve of my hand to make it a bit easier for myself. Okay, then the other eye, we're gonna come almost straight down and then curve it in, same as what we did here, it comes sort of straight at the bottom. So we go straight down and then we curve it in like that. And that gives us our Spider-Man eyes. Right, now we need to add some webbing. So that's quite easy to do. So from that top point, 
we're gonna go almost straight up, almost all the way, and then curve just at the last minute, okay? Because that's the top of his head, so his head bends back behind him. So go almost straight up, right in between his eyes. And then just before you get to the top, maybe two thirds of the way along, you're gonna curve it round behind his head. This side, his um, eye sort of gets in the way of this bit of the web. So we're almost just gonna draw a straight line just to the top of the eye. We don't really need to do anything else for that one. This one, it also goes back, we're gonna have to curve it because this is this side of his head now. So we're gonna have to draw a rounded web side coming like that. Okay, and then the bottom, we've got one to this side of his chin from the bottom points of our pentagram, one to this side of his chin like that. And then you can add just another one just under his eyes. And the way you make it look like webs, if you look at a spider web, you have, they have sort of the lines going out, which are the support, and then they have curved bits in between, which is the bit that catch the fly or whatever. So we do that, we just sort of do U shapes in between and we make sure that they, the top of our U shape goes to a point on here. So we need to do three rows on our Spider-Man. So the first one, we can just do from the eye, a curved shape like that and a curved shape like that. Then the next one we're gonna go from this top corner, do a small one there, and then into the middle. And then because of the shape of his head, he has to go slightly down on this side. And then out to the side. <clears throat> and then again, because his head's curved, we can't see this side of his head now, but we can see this side. So we do a small shape on this side, small curved shape on that side rather a long curve up to the top of his head and then a shorter curve keeping it all in line okay got to add just a few more spider webs to make it look a bit more spider man -y. so we're going to add a line going straight down to this point on his shoulder um, and we just have to curve it just a tiny bit at the top to give it that sort of shoulder shape otherwise it won't look like a shoulder it'll just look like a straight line and then we add a small one to the right and a small one to the left. And then the same as those sort of curvy web shaped, on, that was on the top of his head. This side we're gonna have to go the other way. So we have to do M shapes. So we do some small M's and I'm just gonna do three rows, I think, of M's. Oh, I haven't done the bottom of his face as well. The bottom of his face has also got to have M shaped curvy lines try and follow sort of the shape of the face a bit and it'll help you get those curvy lines. Um, we've got to do his belt and his boots. So his belt, that's fairly easy. You just have to do some straight lines going down. Easy peasy, just two straight lines going down on there. Um, his boots, so this is a bit more tricky because his feet are pointing down towards the floor. We have to follow like that line of his leg. We have to follow that down. So I'm gonna draw three or two lines going down there. And then I'm gonna draw some curvy lines just going over his toes. And then I'm gonna add those um, middle bits of his web on there too. And then we're gonna do the same on this, right? His shoes come in this way this time. Um, we've already got one line here, so we're just going to keep following those lines of his legs. Now, don't worry about the bottom bit, because the bottom bit is the bottom of his shoe, so he doesn't have web on the bottom of his shoe, so don't worry about that. You know, just a little one on his toe, and then we have to add those um, M web shapes on his boots. Okay, and that's almost our Spider-Man done. Just got his hand, or his hands, and to add a little sort of bit of a spider there, but that's fairly easy to do. So following this line that we had from his shoulder, that central line, we're gonna just carry it on down there. And the one slightly to the right, we're gonna carry on down there. The one slightly to the left, we're gonna carry on down. We're gonna leave these bits blank. Okay, I'm gonna draw my M-shaped webs. And then I've got to do the same on this right, so his hand's pointing that way this time. So 
here, the end of his glove is hidden behind his head, so I'm not going to worry about drawing the end of his glove. I'm just going to draw the lines going down, and I'm going to draw them to go in between his fingers. Okay, so I, I know he's got three fingers. This is a stylized Spider-Man. I'm going to draw one, two, and then I'm going to go one, just going in between his thumb here. And then the M shapes, this time they go towards his head, they bump towards his head that way. Remember, you can always pause the video if you need a little bit of time just to catch up. Okay, a couple more things to do to finish our Spider-Man and our Spider-Man picture. Just got to draw a spider web on his back, and that's, uh, not a spider web, sorry, a spider on his back, and that's really easy. We just draw a curved shape and colour it in, and then just add four legs. Only four, because we can only see this half, the other half is behind him, so we can't see that. So you ain't got to worry about that. And then we just add where we've got this curve going from his chin to his arm. Just another line that matches that, and that's all we have to do for Spider-Man. Obviously, we have to cover him in, but we're going to worry about that after. Okay, last couple of things to make this picture look exactly like a comic book. We're going to make this road look like a road. And I don't know if any of you have been to New York. In New York, they have really huge roads like three lanes on this side, three lanes on that side, and then like something down the middle called a central reservation or like an island, or sometimes they have plants down the middle. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add plants down the middle of ours. So we've got a point where we drew our vanishing point. We're gonna use that to help us. So I'm gonna draw from the top of the page, I'm gonna draw a line going down to his head. And then I'm gonna leave a bit of a gap here because I've got this imaginary road. I'm going to draw another line going down here. Then I'm going to leave another tiny gap and just a tiny bit at the bottom. So I've got a small line down here, a long line here, and a line going into his head there. Then I'm going to move my ruler over just a step this way, just tiny, tiny step, that much, tiny step, just to there. And I'm going to add lines to match these lines. Okay, so one there, I've got one here. I've got one here. Okay, if your um, ruler isn't see-through like mine, you won't be able to see, so you just turn your page upside down to do it. But if it is see-through, you can see, so you don't need to worry about that. Then the tops of these, I'm just gonna add a curve on. And the bottoms, to make it a rounded shape. Okay. Right, uh, we've got our pavements, because there's pavements in New York, obviously you have to walk on the pavements. So the way we do that, we're just gonna use our free hand this time. We're not gonna use a, um, not gonna use a ruler, we're just gonna do it freehand. So this is the edge of a building. I'm gonna draw a pavement curve around the edge of this building, just with my pencil, just like this. Draw a nice line, add a curve there, and then it goes behind that building. I've got another building here, so, pavement comes out. Spider-Man's in the way of that edge of that pavement, but that's fine. Now I'm going to come down here. Okay, my pavement's going to carry on. This is an alleyway, so I don't need to add the pavement going around there. I'm just going to go straight across that. I'm going to go straight down to the bottom of the page with this one, because I have buildings all the way down this edge. Okay, this one I've got a couple of roads to think about. So remember when it goes to the edge of the page, if it's not going up and it's flat, it just goes straight like a grid. So this side, I'm gonna add pavement coming down, right down here. So the end of this building, it's gonna curve around and go behind that building. Then I've got another one coming out on this side from this side of the building. It's gonna curve around, oh, I haven't drawn the bottom of that building yet. So anyway, all the way down, and it curves around that way. And then last one comes around this way. Now, you've probably seen New York in movies or uh, you might have actually been all to a big city. Generally, they're not empty. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add some cars. Much easier than it sounds. New York has lots and lots of yellow cabs. And the way we can do yellow cabs is we draw a small rectangle shape. A little line in the middle, a little line on the back, a little line on the front. It's that easy. Or you can do a long shape, and that looks a bit like a bus. You can even add a number if you want. I'm going to add the number 56 because it popped into my head as I was writing it. So I'm going to add some more um, some more traffic. It's 
very busy in New York. I'm going to do two lines on that one because it looks a bit like the front window and the back window of a car. I'm going to do... I might want to add a truck. If you want to add a truck that's slightly different, we do a long shape, a bit like the bus, long shape. Out the top of it, you do a teeny tiny line. So it looks a bit like a candle. And then on the top of the candle, you draw a small square and add a little line. And that's a truck shape, easy one. And add some more taxis and cars. They don't have to be straight, none of mine is straight. If you look because it's a comic book comic books don't necessarily have perfectly straight lines i like the buildings being straight but i'm not going to worry about the traffic too much i'll show you how to do one sort of so it looks like it's coming out from behind the building as well so a bit like our pavement we have here i can just add the front of the taxi sticking out curve it around this way and curve it in and just draw one line add some more traffic there's lots and lots of cars in New York. Uh, I'll add a couple up here. I might add a limousine as well, why not? There's a limousine. Fancy car. Um, add another one in here. Okay, now, this is when you really, really, really have to be careful with your parents' tables and stuff. You need to Make sure you have a second page underneath and we're going to go over all of the lines now when we go over the lines we just do it freehand we don't need to use a ruler again okay so i'm all drawn up what i've got to do now is color it in i'll stop the video before i do that and i'll just show you the end result but um what i'm just going to add just last tiny bit of detail to make it look extra realistic comic book artists they tend to not draw everything they don't tend to draw all of the bricks or all of the windows or all of that stuff that you don't need to what you can do just to make it look a bit more like these are buildings is you can just draw some lines make it look like there are different floors and as you get closer to this vanishing point they can get slightly closer together and it makes it look like the building is going down And on a corner like this one, if you want to add a line onto the corner, you have to make sure that you follow like the street at the bottom to follow that corner. Make sure they all go the same way. All right, so I'm gonna stop recording now and uh, color mine in and I'll show you the end result after I'm looking forward to seeing yours. Okay, so there you have it. That's it all coloured in now. So, yeah. Um, last thing I've got to add to it is his web, because he's going to be swinging from a building, obviously, Spider-Man. So the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to use a silver pen. I don't know if you've got a silver pen. If you don't, don't worry, you can just use a black pen. I'm going to use a silver pen because I like the way it shines up. So the way I do this, I'm going to choose a building. I'm going to choose this one and I'm gonna make his web come into his hands. So the way I do that is not quite a perfectly straight line, slightly offline, going from his hand. I'm gonna go over that as well, nice and slowly. And then I add his spider details by just adding some twists, loops, and loops around. And that's it, that's our Spider-Man picture with perspective. So yeah, once again, send yours in, let's have a look at them and uh, we'll see what we got at the end. Thanks.